Okay, you're on. Okay, so today I am talking about our development for the autonomous boat. And uh, basically there's three things that are the most important aspects for the boat getting across the ocean. One, of course, is having a good boat. The other is having a good navigation system. And number three is a good propulsion system. How are you going to propel the boat? So that's what I'm talking about today, the motor system. So basically this is our uh, prototype here. You can see the motor we have. And this is what you call a pod motor. A pod motor essentially means the uh, electronic component, the actual motor itself, is submerged in the water. So that's inside this little container here and that drives the propeller. And so the electronics have to remain dry. So basically this is fully sealed and then there's a shaft um, going through uh, a, a little hole and there's a seal around that that keeps water from leaking through, which can be a little bit tricky. Now, what you're looking at here, snazzy as it looks, is actually a very inefficient pod motor. This is a trolling motor and we're not going to use this to cross the Atlantic Ocean. So basically, this has 20% efficiency um, as far as a thrust perspective. So basically, if you put uh, 100 watts of power into this motor and you measure how hard it's pushing, you get uh, about 20 watts of push, meaning 80% of that energy has been lost, which is not a good thing. The other thing with a typical trolling motor, and that's average, is about 20% efficiency you get with trolling motors. The other thing is that prop shield, or prop seal, eventually fails. They usually last anywhere from 150 to 300 hours, and then it starts leaking. And once you have water going into that electric motor, that's a not a good thing. The motor will soon fail. So how are you going to get around that? Well, there's one company out there, Torquedo, it's a German company, and they make fantastic trolling motors, which are 50% efficient as opposed to the more typical 20% efficient. So, um, that just shows you how many low-hanging fruit there are as far as increasing the motor efficiency. to be 250% more efficient, but still a Torquedo trolling motor won't be good for us either because they still have the issue of the prop seal eventually failing. They, uh, with their motors, the prop seal lasts for about 300 hours and then they recommend replacing just 12 days going non-stop. Our boat will be going more than 12 days. So it means we are going to design the system from scratch. So I'll come over here and I'll show you what we've got so far. We're working on our prototype. And uh, this is it here. Um, basically, you've got the motor. And then this is here. This is kind of the funky part. This is quite unique. Uh, with regards to our system, this is a magnetic coupler and then of course the propeller here. So basically this is all going to go into a pod and instead of having a typical shaft seal um, which eventually fails, we are conveying the torque from the motor, this is the motor here, uh, through this impervious barrier, there's no hole in this, um, uh, using magnets. So basically we've got two rings, one right here and one right here and there's extremely strong magnets facing each other. So basically when this side spins, just the magnetic force uh, spins this one. So the great thing about this, unlike any of the typical trolling motors out there, which eventually that shaft seal fails, this will go forever. Well basically it's limited by the lifespan of the bearings. We've got thrust bearings on each side and uh, the longevity is much much longer than what you would have with a typical shaft seal. The other benefit is much less friction because, of course, when you have a tight seal around the actual drive shaft, that uh, causes you to lose about uh, five to eight watts of power, whereas this is significantly less. Basically, it's just the friction of the bearings spinning, which isn't very much. So it's quite an elegant system. Um, this can convey, you can convey uh, with the system we currently have, 1.8 uh, newton meters of torque and at 100 watts of power at 1000 rpm uh, we're only going to need about one so basically it's more than enough it's uh, you can see I can, I can twist it with all my might and it does not um, uh, it does not slip at all although this is still just the prototype we've just created this um, using drills and potting the, uh, the magnets and epoxy we're going to have it all machined by CNC which will be much more elaborate. So we're, right now we're just uh, experimenting with this, trying different uh, 
propellers, but we stick, this whole thing goes into a pod, it all gets sealed, I don't want to say a pod, just a tube that it fits into, and then shaping is imperative to have good performance. So that whole pod will be shaped, a very streamlined shape, both fore and aft, this end here will taper down, so there'll be as little drag as possible as it moves through the water, and the uh, propeller will also be optimized. We're working with the uh, UVic engineering students to further optimize the magnetic coupling. This is a straightforward one. You can actually get rid of that, um, the, uh, the thrust that eventually will wear these bearings out after uh, a couple thousand hours by using a different kind of magnetic coupling that instead of them facing each other like that, there's two rings, one going around the other, and that gets rid of all that uh, force pushing inwards. And essentially, with a system like that, you get about 10 to 20,000 hours which is a long, long time without any, uh, 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 without um, the system failing on you. With this one, though, this even just like that, it will be more than enough to get across the Atlantic Ocean. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about the motor here. So that's this motor is a brushless motor. Here's another example of a brushless motor. These are very efficient. Now one of the reasons why typical trolling motors are so ineffective, 20% efficiency, when you can get potentially get them up to 60%, is uh, the motors they use. They use brushed motors, which uh, have more friction within the system. They're much less efficient. You get about typically 60 to 70% efficiency with a brush. With a good um, brushless motor, like this one here, you get about 90% efficiency. So a lot of energy saved there. And uh, the other thing, um, with uh, this type of motor, you have a lot more control over it, you've got a little motor controller and uh, we're going to, we've uh, got the motors optimized so they don't use a gearbox because when you use a gearbox you get another loss of efficiency, right? You're, uh, you're basically losing 10 to 15 percent energy turning all those gears in the gearbox so if you can have a direct drive to your propeller you won't need that gearbox system and uh, you'll have further efficiency but that means your motor has to um, have the sufficient torque and RPM um, for the, the, uh, the type of uh, RPMs that you plan on doing. So, a lot of things to think about, but overall we think we should be able to create a uh, fairly efficient and robust. Of course, it's a combination of two things we're looking for. By not having a gearbox, it's going to be very simple. We also don't have to step down the voltage because of the, uh, the type of motor we're using. We can use it right at 12 volts. You, get another loss of energy when you step the voltage down about 10%. So overall we're just going to have a basic motor, a magnetic coupler, a very efficient propeller, nicely shaped case, and uh, this is what's going to be powering the boat through the water. So if you take it over here and we compare it with a uh, typical trolling motor, you know it's hard to really see any difference, but it will be in a casing fairly similar to this, except that one of the big inefficiencies with these, uh, apart from the inefficient propeller, is the fact that you have this flat end here. You can get a lot more efficiency by tapering that off. And of course, there's no fairings um, in the uh, struts coming down. So all that, the shaping of the, uh, the motor and the supports holding it is a huge uh, component to making it uh, efficient. So um, yeah, we're going to, once we, this is prototype number one. Uh, we're developing another one which we're having machined and then we're going to run that for one month continuously in a tub of water and uh, pushing the prototype around as we're uh, doing other testing to make sure that the whole motor um, bearings everything else has the uh, longevity and we'll examine it closely to see if any other problems crop up and then off the prototype number two we're going to make the final motor number three which is going to go across the Atlantic Ocean so in summary, that is it. This is where we're at with the motor. It's, um, and uh, the next step two is going to be developing the uh, navigation system, which is another intriguing part of the whole story. And that will be coming up next.